So today let's hop in, last class this week, to the topic of the psychology behind self-reflection that creates professional growth. So this type of self-reflection in general creates, it's it, self-reflection, my friend, is proven to create professional growth to help you be more successful in your role, in a company, in an institution, uh, in academia, in your own business. Without self-reflection, I'll tell you today a few stories of what can happen and why we don't take time for it. Plus, I'm going to cover some questions today for, to help you tune into the wisdom already inside of you. And take note that a lot of the wisdom we receive comes from our heart, not our head. A lot of the wisdom we receive comes from our heart, not our head. So if you're new to my private Facebook group, welcome. Nice to see you. If you're new to meeting me, I started my coaching practice over a decade ago, when I knew I was called to teach, speak, write, and mentor. And as a teenager, that was the call of my heart. And I started out working with professional entrepreneurs, especially women who were transitioning into a new line of work. And then I slowly noticed I loved working with men as well. And there's a different vibe that I get and a lovely straightforward approach that I really appreciate. And so I started working with international leaders, men and women, career focused entrepreneurs. So people who own their own companies or people who are leaders in their companies, helping them increase sales, increase impact and exposure th through their career, through their work, so that they could help more people. And at the same time, have the health and happiness, not just the financial wealth. So helping them have all three. And I run my mentorship program, which is opening its doors in September again as well as have options to coach people privately. So at the end, I'll let you in on how you can access those options and we can get on a 20 minute call to discuss them if you're interested. So today, the psychology of self-reflection and why it's so important we make time for it and some questions for you so that you can experience the professional growth that you crave. Because obviously, if you are watching this, you and I are aligned, and you're someone who's very passionate about your work. So here are some of the, the reasons why people don't typically make time for self-reflection. Let me tell you a quick story. I was working with a woman who already had an established business. She was very successful in her community. She had a small team at the time and things, um, things were going well, though at the same time she wanted to see growth, right? And that's human. We all want to see more growth. It's natural. It's not selfish. It's just part of our makeup. We're not happy unless we're growing personally and professionally. And realistically, we're stagnating and even shrinking when we're not growing. So her desire to work with me involved growing professionally and seeing where there were opportunities that were untapped that she could access and expand her clientele, her rate, her team, the whole shebang. And what we started noticing was one of her challenges was when she, when business was just booming, 
she wouldn't make time for self-reflection because she didn't feel like it was necessary. If things are going well, why bother tuning in to the wisdom inside, finding time to be present, finding time for your own health when it feels like you don't have it and there's no real need for that stillness and just being more available to access deeper insight for yourself when you're on a mountaintop. As she became aware that she wasn't taking time for reflection, she was able to see where she felt like um, she was expecting more from her team and yet wasn't taking the lead. She, she realized that even when things are going really well, there's still opportunities for me that are untapped in my professional life unless, but I can't access those unless I take time for self-reflection. I can't just reflect when times feel like, feel tough. So then as soon as she started implementing some self-reflection practices that I recommended for her, she started noticing where she had opportunity for personal growth. She had opportunity to expand her communication skills and be able to be more clear and confident in her delivery. And we worked on developing those skills as well, which as you can imagine, helped her immensely in her relationships with clients and with her team. So you might be wondering, okay, what are some other reasons why people don't make time for self-reflection? Two I wanna cover really quickly are, some people don't trust themselves that the insight they're going to receive is actually what they should act on because in the past when they've listened to themselves, they feel like they've made poor decisions and they can't trust themselves. But you always have an opportunity to start fresh today. And maybe if you've disappointed yourself in the past and you felt like you've listened to that inner voice or you've listened to your heart and things haven't gone well, it's just a way of life. And any successful person will tell you that they've made mistakes, but it doesn't mean that you're a failure. You only fail when you stop trying. So the more you practice listening to your inner voice, or I practice listening to God and my inner voice, that voice, the still voice that comes from your heart, not the rational, try to understand it all voice from your head, the more you'll be able to tune in and hear more quickly when you take time for self-reflection and you purposefully be present. The last reason people don't take time for self-reflection is, <clears throat> Sometimes they're afraid of what they're going to hear. Like they're afraid because in the past they've been berated by family, friends, teachers, that they're going to feel shamed or they're going to feel, um, <clears throat> again, like a failure or like they're not measuring up, they're not enough. Um, th and so therefore you can, see how some of my clients or sometimes myself when you think that is going to happen when you make time to be still and listen why are you going to make the time you wouldn't want to listen to that you want to, wouldn't want to listen to uh, something you don't want to hear so those are three reasons one everything's going so well i'm on a mountaintop business or my professional life and my professional dreams are flourishing right now. So I don't need to slow down. I don't need to be present. I don't need to self-reflect, which is a lie. You just, even if you improve your life by one or 2% by tuning in and listening to that still small voice, your life could be even more of a shining example and inspiration from others for others and you will feel more grounded and focused on the right thing when life is going well. So I want to tell you a story now of another one of my clients who <clears throat> found out some pretty precious 
feedback and wisdom when he took time for self-reflection. He led a number of teams and in the process of leading his teams, he became aware that, well, one of the reasons we started working together is because he wanted personal help and he wanted help with the team because sometimes the team would be doing really well, sales would be high and <clears throat> clientele would be happy. And at other times it felt like productivity was low um, the health of the office and relationships in the office was disconnected, you know, um, not as healthy as it could be. And people could be enjoying working there more than they were. So we realized when he took time to reflect with me, and sometimes you can reflect by yourself through journaling or on a walk. I find that's a really good processing time for me to ask myself questions and check in or talk to God. And then sometimes my clients take self-reflection time when they're one-to-one -one with me, either in my office or online through Zoom. He realized that he was expecting certain activities from his team, and he wasn't actually leading from the front. He wasn't going first and demonstrating to his team that he was doing the work as well, because he was focused on wasn't what wasn't working well within the team and trying to get them to pull their weight but he wasn't following through on some of his own activities and so then he could pull up like tie up his own boots and get to work once he got that valuable piece of information from his self-reflection time he also realized that there were certain conversations he was avoiding because he felt really uncomfortable and he didn't want to rock the boat. And he felt like he wasn't sure if he knew how to deliver the more like crucial conversation, you know, during a high stakes time, sometimes you get really nervous. Some people get nervous. It's common. We get nervous when we have something that's difficult to talk about and we want to be able to deliver it in a way that's kind and yet clear and to the point. And he didn't really trust if he trust himself to be able to do that, but he wouldn't have been able to come up with this insight that his procrastination to have the conversation was holding back the success of the company. Pretty big deal. And he wouldn't have had that insight if he didn't take the time to reflect with me and be present with the reality and the truth. Remember, I was talking about one of the reasons why we don't make time to listen to that personal insight or wisdom from God is because we don't want to hear the uncomfortable truth sometimes, but the uncomfortable truth will set you free. The uncomfortable truth provides solutions. So it's not necessarily a problem. You don't need to berate yourself. That won't help you move forward. Just look at the discomfort as an opportunity for growth. And then you just, you want to see where there's an opportunity for improvement. It's not a sign of your um, inability or your lack of value or anything like that. I hope you really got that point. That was really important. As soon as you gain insight, you can start focusing on how to act on the solution instead of focusing on how to avoid the problem because you feel stuck, right? It's a great switch in energy, powerful use of your focus when you gain new insight and all from sometimes just five minutes of taking time for reflection. If you have insights while I'm teaching, please put them in the comments. It means so much to me to hear from you um, what you're learning and what you're finding valuable because I'm showing up for you, right? I've committed to providing value and insight and tools, <clears throat> tools for self-reflection today so that you can have a breakthrough. So if you have a breakthrough or you have insight or you have a question, please put it in the comments. 
it means so much to me to be in conversation with you. I'm showing up for you, okay? Here's some questions that you can ask yourself. Mm -hmm. Is there anything I'm avoiding that I'd rather not face? So if you like to journal, you can write this. You can use these in as conversation starters with a colleague that you trust, maybe a longtime friend. Is there anything that I'm avoiding that I'd rather not face? If you're doing really well right now, you're on a mountaintop, you're having this experience of abundance and prosperity and growth. Maybe you work with a team and they're really happy. Maybe you feel really seen and heard in your professional role and you feel like things are going great. I wanna challenge you to ask yourself, where is there an opportunity for me to celebrate? What do I need to celebrate and sit in thankfulness about that I've been working towards and I haven't just slowed down to acknowledge myself, to acknowledge the people around me, to sit in thankfulness? Where is there, here's your third question, make sure you're writing these down or pausing me and, and writing down later. What opportunities are right before me that I might miss unless I slowed down? What opportunities for financial growth? What opportunities to support my team? What opportunity to move my dream forward? What opportunities are right before me that if I stopped and slowed down, I would see? Whatever you seek, the doors that you knock on, those will provide you with such unexplainable joy by continuing. I'm going to encourage you to continue knocking on the doors because there are untold opportunities for you, but you need to be the one to knock. You need to be the one to try the handle. And don't get discouraged if you try 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and it's not the right door. That means your best opportunity is around the corner. And if you try to shove one of those opportunities in front of you open because you're tired of waiting, you're going to miss the best opportunity that's on its way to you if you hold the belief that that is the truth for you. Last question. Where would it be helpful if I believed in myself more? Where would it be helpful if I believed in myself more? And if I believed in myself more, how would that be demonstrated in my work life? How would I show up more confidently? What would that look like? Would there be meaningful risks that I would be taking right now if I believed in myself more in that area? I hope you take these questions and you journal or you talk about them with a trusted friend or mentor or spouse so that you can gain valuable insight, wisdom, and solutions, and you can grow professionally and personally. I will see you in a couple days taking the weekend off. If you'd like access to a special I have going during the month of August, I have two private coaching spaces available. And there's really juicy bonuses that I have that I'm offering right now. And your next step would be to contact me and I'll send you an application form to find out if we're a good fit and apply for a 20 minute conversation with me to talk about options. I'm really looking forward to getting to know you. I know that there are some of you who are listening that are feeling like we already have a connection and I may or may not have met you yet, but I wanna say that I've been waiting for you. I believe in your dream and I believe that you are capable of accomplishing it. No matter how daunting or how scary or how big, I believe in you. So let's talk.
Have a wonderful Friday and we will talk next week.